I decided that today I'm going to talk about something politically relevant and interesting. Gas energy policies from 2006. You know, something that will really get the YouTube algorithm pumping with mirth. And also a man who looks like John Palmer from Home and Away, if he had a white collar job. No, <laughs> Let me give you a Star Wars prequel kind of backstory to this endeavour. Western Australia suffered a gas crisis in 2008, which unlike the current gas crisis, um, had an actual legitimate cause as a gas pipeline broke in the northwestern Australia. This caused a third of WA's gas supplies to disappear. And apparently when 35% of your gas is uh, gone, it can uh, result in somewhat increased gas prices. When a third of your gas disappears like politically dissonant journalists when they leak war crimes, it's funny how they just, you know, Cease existing. Things can get a bit hard for the average punter trying to get gas. Premier at the time, Alan Carpenter, acted immediately to ensure that gas prices did not increase for households in Western Australia. He did this by attempting to reduce gas and general power consumption where he could. The Prime Minister at the time, Kevin Rudd, helped the Carpenter government by using the Royal Australian Navy to supply diesel which was used to replace gas where it could be used to replace gas. Not everything can run on diesel instead of gas, but some can, so it worked out. Because Kevin Rudd understood that a dip in the Western Australian economy would have a flow-on effect to all Australians. It was in, thus, the national interest to assist the government at the time. Alan Carpenter's address alone somehow managed to get Westralians to reduce their power consumption by a total of 2%, the equivalent of all of Geraldton. I mean, Jake Paul and Ricegum have nothing on Alan Carpenter. I I'm sorry, you're not a true influencer unless a single speech on the radio reduces residential power consumption by an entire town's worth. Still waiting for Alan Carpenter to drop an anti-Barnett diss track that'll completely destabilise the nation. Premier Alan Carpenter was the state's leader for only two years, placing Jeff Gallup, whose books are very boring and lack substance in my personal view. It's, it's just words. It's pointless. It's kind of hoping for something inspirational and practical. Anyway, Jeff Gallup. Terrible books, probably a great premier. I don't know. We're talking about Carpenter. He replaced uh, Jeff Gallup in 2006 and was defeated in a hung parliament by uh, Shark Boy, aka Colin Barnett, in 2008. Although not a carpenter by trade, he ended up working at the parent company of Bunnings Warehouse after he left government. So I guess that makes him technically a man of the cloth. Truly a Jesus Christ in Western Australian terms. This decision of Alan Carpenter, in spite of him only being in power for two years, set Western Australia up to survive today's current gas crisis and potentially to save all Australians from the current gas crisis. At the moment, in spite of Australia being one of the world's largest gas exporters, for some reason we also have some of the highest gas prices. The Australian Energy Regulator, part of the Australian Competition and Consumer Commission, claims that the wholesale energy costs for retailers have risen by 41.4% in New South Wales, 49.5% in Queensland, and 11.8% in South Australia since 2021. Setting aside just 15% of our state's gas supply for the domestic consumption, we could potentially save the entire country from having to buy back our own gas from another nation's market. Given According to Michael West, uh, the amount of gas that would have to be diverted would be very small at less than 1% of the market. Supplying domestic consumption does not mean stopping exports, it just means taking a little more off the top of the super profits being ripped out of the country by fossil fuel multinationals. Of course, the figure of 15% wasn't pulled out of Western Australian Labor's arse. It'd be very weird. 15% of gas being pulled out of someone's arse is a little less insane than the idea of something that isn't gas being pulled out of someone's arse, so I guess there's that. According to the Carpenter in 2006, the 15% figure reflected the current estimates of future domestic gas needs, estimated gas reserves, and forecast liquefied natural gas export production. And Anna, I know what you're gonna say, 
before you tell totalitarian or communist or other words that weird people specifically named James Fitzsimmons on the waste discussion space of Facebook would say. This was something negotiated with the gas industry. This was smooth talk a hundred baby. No heavy ham fisting. Just smooth sailing. Man was in government for two years. Said some of the most Simpsons predict the future shit you could ever imagine. Refuses to elaborate further and then leaves because of a hung parliament. <laughs> and now he works at Bunnings. Not really. He works for the parent company of Bunnings. So I'm going to pretend it's Bunnings. West Farmers, fuck yeah. Well, that's all I'm going to say um, up front here because I'm sick of uh, not being able to read the script. Ciao.